The misery is very precisely designed and different for each person. And if you didn't know better, you'd say the gods of comedy and tragedy had a hand in it. The single human in the city apartment thinks, I've never known such loneliness. The married human in the country place with partner and children dreams of isolation within isolation. All the artists with children who treasured isolation as the most precious thing they owned find out what it is to live without privacy and without time. The writer learns not to write, the actor not to act. The painter how to never see her studio and so on. The artists without children are delighted by all the free time, for a time, until time itself begins to take on an accusatory look, a judgmental cast, because the fact is it's hard to fill all this time sufficiently given the suffering of others. And besides, now there's no clocking off ever and no drowning artistic anxiety in a party of conversation or frantic exercise. Married men are confronted with the infinite reality of their wives who cannot now be exchanged, even mentally, for a strange girl walking down the street. Her face, her face, her face. Your face, your face, your face. The only relief is two faces, facing forward towards the screen. New lovers for the first time wonder about love. Is love enough? Perhaps a dog should be added to this endless pas de deux. Or some other living creature. Young people hunger for the touch of strangers, of anyone. Club kids go to bed at nine. Older people, surrounded by generations of family, dream of exactly the same empty couch that is, elsewhere, right now, at this very moment, the purest form of torture for some lucky, desperate, fortunate, lonely, selfish, enviable, self-indulgent, privileged, bereft student. Married, divorced lawyers go to war over who will work when. The children whose parents' divorces these same lawyers once arranged now move through the silent streets, being driven from one isolation to another and back again. A metaphor for the folly of human relations they are unlikely ever to forget. The night shift worker with three children under the age of six stops marking the border between days and nights or between one week and the next. There is only work. The single mother with the single child finds the role of child and adult passing fluidly around their small shared space with more ease and fluctuation than either party had ever thought possible. The widower enters a second widowhood. The pensioner, an early twilight. Everybody learns the irrelevance of these matters next to real suffering.